Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You have reached the recap for Married at First Sight episode number six. We're up to already. Thank God. That leaves me with three more episodes I believe after this. But we are going to just continue chugging along okay because I am the queen of catching up even though it may take me a minute. I catch up eventually. The name of this episode is Cancun Can't Touch This and let's just start guys. So we are still in Cancun, Mexico and we are on the fifth day of marriage at this point and a lot has happened in only these five days it's crazy becca and austin start the show with their normally goofy and cutesy annoying selves and emily fell last week on that episode i didn't bring it up i didn't know it would linger into the next episode but this week her wrist still hurts and she's a little concerned about her hand lauren has started to sleep separately from orion to give him space and she says she's trying to figure out things for herself too. She did eventually go upstairs and get in bed so that he wouldn't realize that she wasn't in there. Well, you know, he already realized it, Lauren. Oh, Ryan himself says that he feels that things are a bit offbeat. And today he's actually looking forward to speaking with Lauren. Brennan and Emily are on their way to Flyboard. And although Emily's wrist hurts, She's a good champ. She got out there on that water and she did her thing. Brennan, very much in admiration for her doing that, knowing that she had a hurt wrist. Last night was difficult for Orion and Lauren. She says that she put him in a predicament for him to feel offended. And Lauren, you made a mistake, okay? You said sorry, you were apologetically sorry. You were sincere. I didn't see any sarcasm in your apology. So don't beat yourself up. He's, I'm not going to say he's overreacting. You're allowed to have your feelings. Deal with your feelings and then move on. Don't hold on to them. Okay, let's not hold grudges here. Lauren says that she put Orion in a uh, in a place to have to give her a history lesson. When a minority has to do that, that's just adding insult to injury. So Lauren says that it's going to take some time to see what's best for the both of them, but they're trying. Orion asks Lauren how she is feeling since yesterday. She says, just okay. She says just okay she says nothing that was said yesterday was out of malice and orion says that it was a lot he says that there are a lot of things he doesn't move on or budge on like that's a weird way of speaking that's actually what he said and i was just like okay sometimes when i'm doing these recaps the way these people speak in real life is very challenging okay because i'm just like what the hell you mean by that he basically was saying there's just certain things he doesn't react to like that and that particular thing about his culture is one of those things that he reacted on so orion says that culture is who he is and it's where he's from and all these things are extremely important to him as as they are important to Lauren. When you called a black person the N-word or you used the N-word when you were singing along the songs. Nobody's culture is more important than another person's culture. All of our cultures are important. Orion holds a lot of pride in it, in it meaning his culture. And he says he knows that she does too. And he said that he needed to take a walk. He wasn't upset. Orion, you're so confused. If you didn't, the only time I go for walks is when I'm upset. I mean, you're a flip flopper. You know that. You're 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 a freaking flip flopper, and it's it's truly annoying. Okay, you're annoying. Orion says that you know his thoughts just were not together enough to formulate words where he felt like he would be respectful to her, and so with that, there was no need for him to say anything. So Lauren says in that moment it was best for us to take time away. And she was very angry in that time. She spent a lot of time reflecting on what they can do and what she can do to make her husband feel safe. What can he do to make you feel safe, Lauren? Hmm? Cause he's not very protective right now. He's literally straight up hardcore attacking you. But like I said, he is entitled to his opinion and feelings. But like I said, there's also a thing called mercy. There's also a thing called grace. And she has extended that grace to you, Orion. Why can't you do the same for her is my question. Orion says that he thinks culture in general, they both deal with a lot of insincere, ignorant comments like every day. And neither one of them should have to come back to the house and deal with that same ignorance, okay? And he says that he thinks that they're trying to create something beautiful and they still can do that. They can still create something beautiful, okay? Orion admonishes Lauren for, for them not to run away from the hard conversations. Race, religion, things that people hold core values in is always going to be an intense conversation because of the opposing opinions. Lauren says we have the time and space to do this, like really take advantage of this opportunity on the honeymoon to dig deep 
And it's it's pretty hard to stay mad in paradise. Like I I would agree, but I don't know about Orion. He seems like he could stay mad even in paradise, child. So Cameron and Claire get playful at a at a play paint place is what I have written. And I know I don't know what these things are called, so I have to make them up. They were having fun, some more fun. Um, they had fun last week doing, I believe, the paddle boarding, and now they're here playing with paint. And Cameron, I would have got you in your eyeball with that paint, okay? They were having fun, and again, I like seeing Claire and Cameron just let down their guard and just have a little fun. Stop being so serious all the time. Claire says she feels like her relationship with Cameron has been very serious and she wants to see a side of him that is just more than just serious. So then, you know, they go into this paint fight and Cameron says he likes seeing Claire smile and having fun around him. And it makes him think that she's feeling more attracted to him. That water, I believe it was flyboarding, that Emily and Brennan were out there doing, well, it's really made Emily's hair a tangled up mess. And Emily, I'm gonna need you to get a lesson on cultural sensitivity. Is that the theme of this season, cultural sensitivity? Emily, I'm gonna need you to learn how to watch your mother freaking mouth when you are referring to something that people of different cultures tend to wear. And if you don't like it and you don't like how it looks and you think it's tangled, Emily, keep it to your freaking self. Nobody asked you, okay? Nobody asked you. And that's why your hair got tangled, because you you're mean. You got a mean spirit. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, things happen. But please, watch your mouth. Now we have the group meetups. We have the girls. We have the guys somewhere else. And both groups are describing married life and how it is and how it's going. Claire and Cameron, they actually have made a lot of progress with the fun they were having. So they're getting better. Claire is getting advice from the girls on building intimacy between her and Cameron. She's noticing the differences between the couples, just like Cameron did in the last episode. And she really wants to improve that. The girls were telling her, and I said, did you even realize he had his arm around you the other day? And Claire was so oblivious, she didn't even realize it. And she's like, you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even recognize that. And so the, the ladies are really helping each other out, being very supportive. So Cameron with the guys says, today him and Claire had a breakthrough and he realized that they have a lot of intense conversations. They're both this really weird mixture of silly and serious. They both get stuck in the same mode at the same time and it really makes it hard to progress in a relationship. But Cameron says Claire is so good at communicating exactly how she feels, but she's not great at helping him understand what she wants. Claire tells the ladies that they aren't physically affectionate. And in the past, Claire admits to struggling with that. She says a lot of guys that she's been with haven't been willing to show her off in public, not willing to hold her hand. So that's the type of stuff that she's used to. So when she looks at the couple, she thinks it's the weirdest thing that they're already, you know, doing all that, that physical stuff. Claire goes on to say that her and Cameron differ from all the couples because there hasn't been that touchy feely situation going on. Now on Cameron's end with the guys, he says that he's really attracted to Claire. He finds her attractive. And while they're not the most intimate yet, he is looking forward to getting there. So the ladies want to know um, what, how have they gotten physical? And Claire says they've hugged, but they've never kissed or cuddled. So Becca gives her advice to reciprocate when he's touching her or something. And like I said, I don't know if it was Emily or Becca, but one of them reminded her, hey, he, he had his arm around you the other day. You didn't even notice. Lauren admits to Claire and the ladies that you're not the only one going through relationship issues. You know, me and Orion have dealt with some really uncomfortable conversations. Nobody's blind. You know, everybody can see that, that we're in an interracial relationship, she says. And her and Orion are trying to understand each other as individuals, understand each other's cultures. She thinks they're handling it very well. Lauren says that that uncomfortable conversation yesterday, it made them feel very separated from each other. It made them realize how different they were from one another. So Orion says that he wouldn't say that the marriage is everything he thought it would be, but he would say Lauren is everything he wanted in a partner and there's something growing and it's, it's nice. Lauren says she doesn't think yesterday was a loss. They're learning. They're going to have difficult conversations. And Claire says it's surprising. She says to us in the confessional, Claire says it's surprising to hear that Lauren and Orion are more distant than she thought. She doesn't know what the conversation was. She doesn't know what it was about, but it makes her very sad and surprised. And she hopes whatever it is can be worked out. So Lauren says they're both resolution oriented. So they're comfortable acknowledging conflict. Becca is waiting for something bad to happen because it's just going, oh 
so good and girl you're gonna regret those words emily said it's hard for her to even know because she's never had a relationship and emily says going from single to married has been pretty normal but she's trying to figure it out brennan said that he wanted a best friend and a partner and he's trying to find out more about Emily. They had fun that day, trying new things, and it's cool to see Emily embrace the activities, and he's excited to do more firsts with her. Lauren says to Emily, I know you was down to do it <laughs> on the honeymoon, and Emily says she's trying to take a different route because in the past she's rushed into sex, but this time she's not. She's gonna build more of an emotional connection um, prior to that intimacy. Emily talks about how she hurt her hand and um, Cameron asks what is going well for you guys over at the guys area. Austin says there's not one specific thing and Cameron says you know you and Becca look like you look like y'all communicating telepathically all right and uh, Austin says things are going well and he just leaves it at that he doesn't say anything more than that. Becca says there are topics that we haven't talked about in depth Becca says she tends to go into those right away. She says, just because we look like we're getting along oh so well now, does not mean we're gonna last in the end. She's had chemistry with people in the past and those relationships didn't last. So you know, after you have the separate discussions or anytime y'all see them talk to people outside of themselves, you obviously know they're gonna get back with each other and talk about what was talked about, okay? So Austin, so Austin and Becca do a recap of what they talked about on the beach where Austin lets Becca know he diminished how well they get along because he didn't want to make the other people feel bad. Becca said, uh, you don't need to dim your light to make someone else a shine or some crap. She said, I forgot, girl. It was just similar. It was similar to that. Austin says he didn't say anything bad and he thinks they're doing good, but he doesn't feel the need to rub it in their faces. Cameron tells Claire that he told the guys that he thought she was a great communicator. Uh, she is on a totally different level from him and he can definitely stand to improve. Claire is impressed and she appreciates what Cameron says and thanks him for that. Claire says that she herself needs to realize that everyone communicates differently. Claire let him know that she was basically comparing and getting advice from the ladies. She told Cameron they noticed that he put his arm around her and she apologizes to Cameron for not even being aware of his affection. Cameron says they're both trying and they both saw the fun side and maybe they just need to relax and just have a good time. At this point, Cameron is still super optimistic about their future. Lauren brings Orion his favorite ice cream flavor. I believe it was mint something, I forgot. She tells Orion that she taught them that they're not perfect and they're just committed and that's what it looks like. So Orion says even with that tense conversation on the balcony, he still has trust in her. And Lauren says that she was worried about that and worried how much of the trust was gone because that trust can be very difficult to rebuild. Lauren basks in shame and guilt. And Lauren, uh, listen, you said, you said so many times that you do that, like you beat yourself up. And girl, I can relate. Sometimes I do things that I know are wrong and I literally will beat myself up and I realize that that's not conducive to your growth, beating yourself up. What you need to do is forgive yourself the same way others can forgive you, the same way you forgive others. You really have to forgive yourself. You cannot beat yourself up every day. I don't beat myself up for the wrong things I do, child. Lauren says that it feels good to get grace from her husband and she knows their future will contain conflict, but it feels good to know they'll work through it together. Lauren says she wants to set the standard of a morning routine, cuddles and care. Orion loves that and he says because he hasn't had anyone like that. So everybody's meeting up together as couples to go on a boat. Guess what? Hello guys. Hola. 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 So unfortunately it's raining a lot. So boat is not gonna happen. So I guess they divert and go to dinner instead. So they go to a group dinner and the Lifetime producers hand them some cards to ask questions because you know, it's a reality show, it's Lifetime. Basically, to make this way easier to recap, Cameron's pet peeves is when there's no self-checkout. I agree with that one. All right, Becca feels most fulfilled in the romance area. Do you do? Oh, right now, that's what you're talking about, right? Okay, Lauren says she could be the most vulnerable with her sister outside of her mom that passed away. Um, Emily is curious about actually being in love. And Orion is asked by Lauren, what is she teaching him? What a question. Y'all really trying to start trouble on Lifetime, aren't you? Aren't you? Orion says she's teaching him. How to talk about the future, you know? And so, and in doing that, you know, I kind of caught feelings. <laughs> 
reverses the question and Lauren says that he's helping her to expand giving grace and action. And she says he's patient, kind, and gentle with her. Let's go on to these next questions. These, I literally just ran through so many questions they were asking. I'm just like, how y'all expect a person to freaking recap this crap? Tell me how. That's why I was really reluctant to do this show, guys, because it's very, this is one of the most difficult shows to recap. Claire's biggest life lessons to make sure you show people you care about them while they're here. Cameron says the hardest part of himself to accept is a lot of his memories do not align up with who he is anymore. He says that he has large portions of his life that are like watching a movie and it feels difficult because they don't feel like memories anymore. When he was younger, he hated school. His parents got divorced. It affected him a lot and I don't get what he's saying. And if you do, please put it in the comment section. I'm really sorry. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Either he's being too vague or I don't understand English. Which one is it? Child, I don't know. Claire said it took a lot for him to say that. Claire, can you explain to us what he's saying? Child. Claire says she's seeing a whole new side of Cameron, learning a lot about him and is feeling more connected to him through this conversation. Emily, 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 and this tangled hair, and Emily, 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 and this tangled hair. Lifetime doesn't like Emily very much, apparently. I don't know. They hired this guy to come in there. When I tell you he chopped off all her damn hair, I don't even think he looked in between the hair or whatever the connection was. I don't know what type of extensions these were. I don't know if they were sewn in, glued on. I don't know. But he took that scissor and he hacked off all her hair. By the time she was done, she was like, my hair feels so thin. I know I lost some hair. Brennan was walking in there like, I don't really know what the hell's going on, but he walked in and walked out. How was that supportive? So the group is gonna try for number two to go on this boat ride. And one of the ladies asks Emily, so what did the hairstylist do? And Cameron says, open weave surgery. They get to the boat and they're on here. They're having drinks, they're dancing, they're having a ball, okay? Cameron and Claire are getting along fine. Emily loves that Brennan has been great with the hair thing. I mean, I maybe I'm maybe my memory is lost because I know I took notes, but I just saw Brennan come in there and then leave. I mean, he didn't say, you okay, girl? You want some water? Like, he ain't do all that. He didn't say, let me get scissors, let me help, let me get a comb, nothing. I mean, I'm not saying he would do that with a hairstylist there, but he really just walked in there, walked out. He said, I don't know what the hell's going on. I, when things happen to us, men, we just get our hair cut. Whatever, um, Emily, but alrighty then. Brennan says that she looked great regardless, even though losing her hair or whatever was upsetting. Emily still had a smile on her face and she didn't let it affect the outcome of the entire day. Here we are with the moments like this. Can't please stop recycling songs. You know what Beck and Austin said. Pretty much know what Brennan and Emily said. And the two other couples, you already know where they stand. So Brennan says that he wouldn't want to do this experiment with anyone else, which means a lot to him because he has a close circle. And the fact that Emily is getting close inside the circle means that she's starting to earn his trust and he appreciates her. So Cameron says yesterday there was a change with them and it's comfortable for him now to hold her hand and put his arm around her. And Claire says it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Cameron says that this has been hardest on her. He thinks that he's more willing to be uncomfortable feeding off the awkward energy. They're getting along a lot better and he appreciates it. So Claire says they're making massive steps. Cameron says to Claire that she's an amazing person and it helps that she's, he says she's uneasy on the eyes with me, which made for a very funny joke, but we know what you meant. Emily says that she's excited to go on into real life. Brennan says that he's not worried. Nothing he's really concerned about in the future and they're gonna be building a foundation. Emily says she's happy. Brennan says, me too. And <laughs> Orion asks if anyone has any fears of what might change in reality. Austin doesn't. He said he's in the moment and he doesn't like to set expectations. He's positive. Becca is an overthinker and she's thinking what can go right. Thinking what can go right. Lauren says she's not sure what the worry could be about, but she doesn't think there's much that can make them divorce. <laughs> Lauren is an overthinker and although she's not worried yet, she feels comfortable and she's trusting Orion isn't going to throw it away. And Lauren says that everyone is basking in the love that is in the air and she feels blessed to be around it with Orion. So we're here with Orion and Lauren. Lauren says that this was her favorite day. Orion says the highlight of the day was the dancing on the boat. Lauren enjoys touching him, she says. She loves skin to skin contact. And they get into this conversation about sex and what it would be like and what she would like. And she gets very graphic and I am not. You're welcome. <laughs> Orion. I did not need to know 
that you have uh, you have so many toys. I'm gonna skip this. Okay, let's skip this. Let's skip this part. They really got into it. Okay, on the fifth day, they talking about sex, child. Lauren wants to learn a map of his body. Girl, I'm cringing. Okay, anyway, let's you know let me erase this part of the um notes and let's just uh, skip that. Lauren says she wants everything to be organic. Orion says that hearing her say that brings a lot of comfort to him. Orion ends up. In, a, in this conversation saying that it's been a long time since he had sex and Lauren asks when did you last do it and Orion says it's been a little more than a year and a half Orion says it's more than just a physical act for him Lauren says it's definitely been less time for her and admits the last time she had sex was two months ago after Lauren tells Orion that she had sex only two months ago huge judgment from Orion and he says now he's feeling a little uncomfortable he said his mindset going into married at first sight was you know he was gonna get married basically said that Lauren didn't even have that same intention so Orion says we could just be very different in our approach to where he knows what he's worth and doesn't want to just hand himself out Orion really so Lauren asks, how do you feel knowing that I just had sex two months ago? Being honest, uh, it kind of took sex off the table for me. That was the end of the show. Are you freaking kidding me? In my opinion, this is where it was the beginning of the end. It wasn't just, oh, she made a derogatory comment. It was this right here, this sex part. This is when I noticed that the relationship started really going downhill. I am done with this recap. We're gonna move on to the next episode. I think I have two more episodes left. I'm gonna stop counting, okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.